Police tape and flowers, the grimly familiar ritual of another death on our streets. Every 14 minutes, there's a knife crime across England and Wales. It's really sad reading headlines like these and watching news reports like those all the time. And it just begs the question, what is going on? And what could be done about this issue? So I would like to find some data and try and answer some of these questions. The UK government has an open data policy and publish searchable data sets about a variety of topics, including knife crime, which is what we search for. Here, we can find data about a violent crime where a knife was used. It took a while to find the right file, but I've sped it up for you. Knife Crime Open Data details the number of offences nationwide. Loading the file into Python allows us to explore the data. We can see the year and quarter the offence happened, the police force who made the arrest, the type of offence that was reported, and how many times it occurred. Let's focus on the two police forces of London and calculate how many total crimes involving a knife took place. Plotting each data point one after the other, we can see how the number of offences involving a knife changes over time. There's a sharp spike in 2017, and adding a line of best fit clearly shows that there has been an increase. Can we now be a bit more specific about exactly where in London these crimes are happening? The UK police release data right down to the individual crime level. It is all readily accessible through their friendly API at data.police.uk. Here we can select the date range we want, the police forces we're interested in, and even the level of detail we need. Our file is now ready to be downloaded. Looking at this data, we can see each crime has a unique ID, and the month in which the crime took place, the police force, the latitude and longitude of where the crime took place, the local authority district it falls in, and finally the type of crime are all reported. We can focus only on the local authority districts of London, and then from the list of possible crimes, possession of weapons best fits our needs. Looking at only these crimes, we can create a heat map for each year. The more intense and red an area, the more crimes were reported there. Similar work has been carried out by April Zioli, as described in this Hidden Brain podcast. April wanted to see if there were patterns to the mayhem. When she overlaid maps showing crime data from one year to the next, she noticed something interesting. The blotches that showed the highest levels of crime seemed to metastasize from year to year. There's obviously no virus that causes crime, but April started to wonder. Is it possible that crime can spread like an infectious disease? The idea of violence as a disease is also discussed in this TED Talk by Gary Slutkin. Well, what really predicts a case of violence? And it turns out that the greatest predictor of a case of violence is a preceding case of violence, which also sounds like if there is a case of flu, someone gave someone a case of flu or a cold, or the greatest risk factor of tuberculosis is having been exposed to tuberculosis. And so we see that violence is in a way behaving like a contagious disease. So what happens when you treat knife crime as a disease? Scottish city Glasgow once held a grim title, the murder capital of Europe. But homicides in the city have fallen by 60% in just over a decade, all thanks to a radical approach, treating violence as a disease. Just as before, we can find data about crime in Scotland and make the same plots. As time goes on, we see a drastic fall from almost 20,000 knife crimes a year down to around about 8,000. A huge reduction in under 10 years of taking a different approach. Let's hear what some of their learnings were. We know that at its heart, violence comes from inequality. It comes from deprivation. It comes from poor housing and education. We can see these same concerns expressed by the mother of a victim of knife crime. No investments for the young people. Community centres being closed down. No emotional support for our young people. There is a lot of other data available on the government website that can be useful. 
This includes the population of each local authority district, how many students are not in education, employment or training, known as NEAT, and how many pupils are disadvantaged. First, we load in the knife crime data that was calculated previously, which tells us the number of knife crimes per local authority district. Now, we can also look at the population of each local authority district, as well as the percentage of neat and disadvantaged pupils in each local authority district. The crime and population figures are combined in order to calculate the number of knife crimes per 1,000 people. We can then compare this number to the percentage of neat and disadvantaged pupils, looking at 2016, which is the most recent year for this data. Looking at these plots, we can see that as the percentage of neat pupils increase, so do the number of knife crimes per 1,000 people. The same is even more true for the number of disadvantaged pupils. And now, a message from our Prime Minister. So when we've secured a good Brexit deal for Britain, I've been sending with you next year. debt as a share of the economy will continue to go down support for public services will go up. Because a decade after the financial crash, people need to know that the austerity it led to is over. It's exciting to see some of this funding coming into effect. On 31st of January 2019, it was announced that the UK police were to be given a host of new powers in an attempt to tackle violent crime. It means making sure, first of all, police have resources and we're increasing that, making sure also they have the powers that they need, and this is a new power, knife crime prevention orders that will allow the police working with the courts to put curfews on young people, to uh, encourage them to go to education classes about the, uh, the risks of carrying a knife, to even uh, to stop them from using social media. This is part of the Serious Violence Strategy published last year, which can be easily found online. It also states that Tackling serious violence is not a law enforcement issue alone. It requires a multiple-strand approach involving a range of partners across different sectors. While it doesn't explicitly state violent crime will be treated as a public health issue, a lot of the outlined approaches suggest it will be such as asking Public Health England to update their guidance to frontline practitioners on the mental health needs of gang-affiliated young people. To summarise, the data has shown us there has been an increase in knife crime in London. We've also heard about the idea of violence behaving like a disease and seen the effects of treating it like one can have. Finally, we've seen that London has started implementing similar ideas, which I'm hopeful will have positive effects. I hope you enjoyed watching and feel inspired to do some of your own investigating. And if you do, let me know what you find.